Hello and welcome to this week's video roundup. My name's Sean O'Neill and I'll be taking you through the week's best science videos. First out of the hat, acrobatic geckos. Catherine Brahick tells us how they use their tails to perform some funky moves. Geckos are good climbers because of their sticky feet, but researchers are now finding out that their tails are just as important. A gecko uses its tail in two ways when it slips off a wall. If it loses one foot, its tail can be seen quickly touching the surface so that it can regain its footing. But if both feet come off, the gecko falls backwards and uses its tail like the kickstand of a bicycle to push itself back up on the wall. When placed in a wind tunnel, a gecko spreads out its limbs and uses its tail to help it glide. During freefall, it can snap its tail in one direction, which forces its body to flip in the other so that it always lands on its feet. The researchers found that it only took about a tenth of a second for a gecko to rotate its body. The agility of the gecko is inspiring the design of robots with mechanical tails that help them climb. The researchers think a gecko-like tail might be a useful feature for small, unmanned gliding vehicles. It might even help astronauts manoeuvre in space. While geckos are a model for some climbing robots, other researchers have been inspired by humans. Tom Simonite tells us about two new robotic rock climbers. Capuchin is the newest climbing robot built by researchers at Stanford University in California. Its predecessor climbed by planning the position of its arms and legs, but the new robot can also shift its weight as it climbs. This is more similar to the way humans climb, and Capuchin is also much faster than the older model. It completes four arm and leg moves in 30 seconds, while the older robot managed only 11 in one hour. This robot was created by researchers at Virginia Tech University and uses a tether to help pull itself upwards. Like Capuchin, it tries to use similar positions to humans when climbing. The researchers plan to incorporate a laser into its design, which would help it map out the climbing surface overhead to plan its route. Our next clip compares humans and falcons in the air. When paragliders soar through the sky, they make use of known thermals to calculate their route. These columns of warm air rise faster than a paraglider normally descends, and so it keeps them aloft. It's marked in red in this video. At the top of a thermal, a paraglider will start gliding down towards the next patch of warm air, shown here in blue. Paragliders rely on their experience and intuition to calculate how long and fast they should climb, and at what angle they should descend to catch the next thermal. To see how falcons compare, Hungarian researchers fitted them with GPS to track their flights. The falcons appear to use a very similar formula to champion paragliders and seem to move in the same way from thermal to thermal. Finally, we take a look at the learning abilities of laid-back and stressed-out squirrels. At the University of Chicago, researchers looked at ground squirrels with different amounts of cortisol, a hormone which is produced in response to stress. They wanted to see how it affected a squirrel's ability to learn to navigate through a maze. This squirrel has low levels of the hormone and was not a fast learner. Twitchy squirrels with a very high level of the hormone also perform poorly. But squirrels like this one with moderate levels of the hormone were the very best learners. In humans, traumatic events can alter cortisol levels. So the team hopes that their research will help us better understand the hormone's effect on human learning. And that's enough animal magic for one week. But for more science and technology news, visit our website or buy the magazine. Bye for now.